Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas, and this is the Prophetic Word Show. You know, the prophecies show what is taking place right now. It's showing it in prophecy. It showed it thousands of years before it started taking place. The words of the Savior in this time period, he, he spoke these words in, in Matthew 24. Well, Matthew, the 24th chapter. If you'd get a pencil and paper and write these things down, I will show you some things that you that it will help you to understand Yahweh's plan in the Scriptures. It'll help you to understand His plan of action to bring man uh, to be sons of sons of Yahweh and to give him a an eternal position in the kingdom of Yahweh. Uh, an eternal position, those who will rule like Yahweh rules, those who will bring joy and gladness and peace. I have a, a handful of articles here that all of them have to do with with war, getting ready for war, for nuclear wars, children with half faces, ears missing, uh, lips missing, being born this way today. Did you know now every child that's born has a birth defect? Yes, has diseases. Some of, some of them are life-threatening. Many children don't live but a short time now. They, they're they born with sickness and disease. Uh, and, and, and of course, all of this, it's not, it's not really wanted, you know. I mean, we, we think of it as the desirable way because Satan puts it in your mind to uh, desire sin, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, Adam and Eve, they looked at this and it was so desirable, they said. You know, and this is what the world looks at today. It's really not desirable when you see the t total picture. You see a few minutes of sin or lust and you want to fulfill those lusts and of course that's what makes it look desirable. And and uh, But, it's, but it's, it's not if you just see the end result of it like we're seeing now. And of course, the nuclear war, if you can see just a little bit of the future, uh, as is prophesied by the prophets of uh, the inspired prophets of Yahweh, by the 12 disciples of the Savior, Yeshua Messiah, you can see that sin is not desirable at all. But I hate to even show this stuff. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like it's an evil thing, completely evil, with the children being bombed, their parents being taken away from them, the children uh, uh, wind up hurt, crippled, uh, uh, and, 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 and die at a very young age. Half of them, their, bo their bodies are blown apart with bombs and so forth. Well, this uh, so-called desirable way that Adam and Eve chose and followed, and of course then Cain came later and... Uh, he followed the same way. In fact, Cain was a righteous, was a uh, was a priest, not a righteous priest, but a priest. And uh, and Abel was a righteous priest of Yahweh. And of course, uh, uh, the prophets say that uh, that uh, for years later uh, they had the old saying that uh, to receive an answer from Yahweh, asked at Abel. Uh, even uh, years later after the flood and so forth, it was, it was all preserved at that time. Here in Matthew, the 6th chapter, in verse 33, the Savior said, Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and His righteousness. Um, most people don't even have any clue, any idea of uh, what Yahweh's righteousness is. Now that's how far they've gotten away from the Bible. At one time, people studied the Holy Scripture. And Isaiah 34, 16, I believe it is, Yahweh said, uh, Seek out the book of Yahweh and read. Seek out the book of Yahweh and read. Well, it doesn't say that in the King James Version. It says, Seek out the book of the Lord and read. How, did, how come His name is not there? In the 23rd Psalm, you see the prayer. Yahweh is my shepherd. That's the first verse. The King James Version has the Lord is my shepherd. Why was his name taken out of the Holy Scripture? If you have an interlinear, if you don't, we'll, we'll send you a copy of it. 
But Zondervan Company put out an interlinear showing the manuscripts from which the King James Version was taken and all the other versions were taken. And, of course, the manuscripts has Yahweh is my shepherd. And the last verse, verse 6, says, I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. Well, why was it changed? Did you ever think about that? Or did you even know that uh, that the name was the holy name? The name of Yahweh was taken out of the Holy Scriptures and replaced with the words Lord and God. And why? Well, of course, uh, most people don't know that the Bible, the book of Yahweh, Isaiah thirty four sixteen. Uh, was actually taken away from the people. In fact, uh, D- Daniel the prophet spoke of this, that there'd be four world-ruling kingdoms. The last one was the Holy Roman Empire, they called it. The popes took the, by, took the Holy Scriptures away from the people. They sent their Roman general, whose name was Titus, to destroy the temple They moved the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians who controlled the temple in Jerusalem. They killed the Savior. They've killed off the disciples and and, uh, all of their followers, or the biggest part of their followers, but they were still having trouble. So they moved to Rome, and they sent Titus, the Roman general, to destroy the temple and move all the artifacts to Rome. I'm not just speaking off the top of my head or guesswork. You look up Titus in any encyclopedia, Titus. That's all you need to look up, and it will give you this. We'll send you a copy of it free and a sermon to go with it, absolutely free. Just call the number on your screen, write email, call, whatever, and we'll send you a copy of that information. But you could get it yourself just by looking in a any encyclopedia, the name Titus. A lot of dictionaries have it even. But he was the Roman general that was sent to destroy the temple and to move all the artifacts from the temple to Rome. And, and of course, they got the Ark of Titus. They call it the Ark of Titus that is in Rome at this time. They got a duplicate of it sitting in front of the Knesset building in Jerusalem, Israel. And, uh, of course, uh, you ask the people there coming out, well, what is what does that represent? Uh, they don't know some historical marker. <laughs> well, that is the Ark of Titus, the general, the Roman general, who destroyed most of the people in Jerusalem because they wanted to keep the laws of Yahweh. They wanted to be righteous, and they wanted to follow the Holy Scriptures. Well, of course, the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, they did not keep the laws of Yahweh, and they killed they killed the Savior because he himself was teaching the laws of Yahweh. And in fact, that's the reason they hated him. If you turn to, to John, uh, if you have a King James Bible, uh, or if you have a book of Yahweh, and by the way, they are available, and they're the closest thing there is to the original... Uh, manuscripts of the inspired scriptures. But in John, if you have a, uh, write this down, John 15, verse 22, it says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have their sins revealed. Not have their sins revealed. If I hadn't have come and exposed their sins, they would never have had them revealed because they were squashing the law. They were fighting against the law, as the seventh chapter of Daniel shows, verse 25. But here he says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had their sins revealed. But now they have no cloak for their sins. He who hates me hates also my father. If you go over to the sixth chapter of Matthew, The Savior himself said, Seek, but seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh. And they took the name of Yahweh out of the Holy Scriptures and replaced it with Lord. Did you know, I I, I dare you, I dare you to call in and get the information on this. Why did they take the name of Yahweh out of the Scriptures? Why did they take the Scriptures 
away from the people. Yes, Titus, when he destroyed the temple, he brought all of those artifacts to Rome, including the book of Yahweh that Isaiah 34 mentions. If you'll write this scripture down, Isaiah 34, 16, it says, search out the book of Yahweh and read. Search it out, well, where is it? No one heard of it. In this generation, well, because that the popes, when General Titus brought the book of Yahweh to Rome, well, they locked it up. And they wouldn't let anyone have access to the Bible. If anyone had a manuscript and they didn't turn it in, they, that, that was an act of murder. You know, that, I mean, they, that was a death penalty. If you owned a menorah, which shows the seven works of Yahweh in the Holy Scriptures, if you had it in your house and didn't report it or give it over to the Roman Catholic Church, they'd kill you. It's a death penalty. It's a death penalty to keep the Sabbath day. People think the Sabbath day is Sunday. That's how ignorant they are on the Holy Scriptures. The, the fourth commandment that's given to you in Exodus, the 20th chapter, you really need to read that because that, that fourth commandment says keep the seventh day holy. Sunday is not the seventh day. Sunday is the, named after the sun god Baal. The same thing that Christmas is named after. Christmas, December the 25th, that's not the Savior's birthday. Did you know that? Christianity, the Catholic Church and Christianity is based on nothing but lies. It's full of nothing but lies. Does Santa Claus really come down the chimney and bring toys? Did, was that actually something that was shown in the Holy Scriptures? No, none of it. How about the goddess, uh, the, the Easter goddess? What does that have to do with salvation? It's condemned by Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah 23, verses 26 and 27, you'll find out they, they caused the people to forget Yahweh's name for Baal. And of course, when they finally, 1,500 years after keeping the book of Yahweh hidden, there were people that was actually looking at that book secretly, and they were wanting to print it. They were wanting to get it to the people. But it was, an, it was a, against the law, against the law that they passed, that the Roman Catholic Church passed, because they say, well, that's, that's trouble. You know, that's troublesome, and it starts causing us trouble. Well, they had trouble anyway. You know, they had trouble within their own kingdom, within the Roman Empire. In fact, it fell. It couldn't stand. There was nothing to hold it together, as Daniel showed in a vision that he had, where iron was mixed with clay. There was nothing to hold it together. They fought against each other. The Pope said... Come follow me, and let's go take this land, take the people's wealth, and we'll divide it among ourselves. This was the Crusades. They call it Crusades. You could look that up if you want to. Just look up the word Crusades in the, in the encyclopedias. Now, I grant you the Catholic Church is buying the encyclopedia companies, so, so they're taking things out that they don't want shown. But they didn't want the book of Yahweh shown at all. And they kept it hidden from the people for 1,500 years. That's why, and then after, after certain people started getting it because the Catholic Church was weakened by the bubonic plague, and of course uh, all their cardinals or a bunch of their cardinals died, and, their co and, the, and uh, this uh, beast suffered a deadly wound, as, as the prophets said it would, the Catholic Church was weakened and they could no longer... Uh, they could no longer keep things hidden. And so certain men got a hold of these scriptures and they printed, they printed them, yes. And because of that, uh, one of the men, one of the people that printed it, one pope dug up his bones later and, tri and, uh, and she uh, burnt them and did all sorts of things to them. Now this was the idiots that we had that was called popes. 
read the history on them, read the history of the Bible, the history of the Bible. That's all you have to do. And you will see what took place with the book of Yahweh. It was actually speaking of the book of Yahweh. Isaiah thirty four sixteen. search out the book of Yahweh. They changed the name and called it, search out the book of the Lord. Well, no one knew what the book of the Lord was. They knew what the book of Yahweh was at one time until it was totally taken away and for 1,500 years forbidden, killed off everyone they could find that kept the laws. Uh, and, and of course, these things took place just a few years ago. I mean, they led up to our time period. Look and see when the Bible itself was actually printed, the printing press and so forth, when it came into where where the, the Bible could really be put out by in abundance, it was forbidden, of course, but eventually certain men got it through and started getting it out to the hands of the people. That was just about 100 years ago, a little over 100 years ago. 1600s, that was 200 years after America was dis- discovered, after the land of America was so-called discovered. The Indians who lived here, they call them Indians, those people were Hebrew people. They ran, they fled, they fled the east and found land in the west and here they settled. And they had songs to like, hey, ya, 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 ho, ya, ya. That stood for Yahweh. And of course, the, if, the, if they'd have been living in Europe at the time, they would have had a death penalty against them there. You couldn't use the name Yahweh. That was one of the first things they did. Well, Jeremiah 23, let me read you that. Jeremiah 23, talking. this is speaking of the shepherds who had control of the temple at that time. Actually had the t- control of the temple and, and even in Yahweh's house. It was called the house of Yahweh. I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever, the 23rd Psalm said. Well, Yahweh says, woe to these shepherds. And he said in chapter 23 of Jeremiah, verse 26, how long will you continue in this lie? You prophesy lies in your own heart. Verse 27, who devise plan and scheme to cause my people to forget my name through their dreams as they tell everyone his neighbor just as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. You cause my people to forget my name. How long will this be in the hearts of the people that prophesy lies? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, who defies and cause my people to forget my name. To forget my name. The name Yahweh. Well, of course... When I was born, I had a King James Version uh, that uh, not, I, I guess I was probably five years old when uh, mother and dad gave me a King James Version of the Bible. And in fact, that's where I learned to read from the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, and, and I was reading the King James Version of the Bible before I ever went to school. But anyway, back here to Matthew now, or Matthew, Matthew 6 and verse 33 the savior says but seek you first to the kingdom of yahweh and his righteousness well what is his righteousness what is yahweh's righteousness compared to the righteousness we see today what is the righteousness of the churches today fighting war hatred sickness disease fornication adultery bestiality and sodomy This is all going on in today's religions. And when you speak of the righteousness that the Savior quoted here, the righteousness of Yahweh, you will immediately draw a frown from the preachers. Wherever you go to church today, you will draw a frown. And I say, "Uh uh-oh, this man is on the right track. He's going to call somebody to kill himself. While they go killing, bombing, shooting, Shooting, yes, school shootings, hospital shootings, every kind of shooting, even shooting our policemen now. Yes, shooting the policemen. Well, the policemen shot us, so we're going to kill them too. (laughs) You know, 
Now, this is what the world is teaching. This is what the religions are teaching. And, and, and of course, they got continual war going on, right? What is the righteousness of Yahweh? If you write down 1 John 3, verse 4, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Exodus 20 shows you the Ten Commandments, the laws of Yahweh, Ten Commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not murder. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? That's the, first, that's the fourth commandment. Well, if you break one of these commandments, James 2.10 says if you break one of these commandments, you're guilty of breaking them all because you become a part of the system of sin. Well, in 1 John 3, verse 4, whosoever commits sin transgresses Yahweh's law. Acts 3.19 says, repent and be converted so your sins will be wiped out. Repent and be converted to what? Keeping the laws of Yahweh. That is, if you want salvation. Look at verse 7. Little children, do not let any man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. He who breaks the law of Yahweh is a sinner. But he who practices righteousness is righteous. He who practices it. It's a, he becomes a righteous person. Verse 8. But he who commits sin, he who commits sin, that's opposite to practicing Yahweh's righteousness, which is keeping his law. Sin is breaking the law. Righteousness is obedience to the law. Verse 8, this is 1 John 3, verse 8. He who commits sin is of the devil. He who breaks the Ten Commandments. He who does not keep the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, holy, belongs to Satan the devil. It couldn't be any clearer, any plainer than that. He who breaks the law, he who practices breaking the law, belongs to Satan the devil. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Verse 8, he who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. In fact, she was the one that led Adam and Eve into this desirable thing that is now causing wars to become nuclear wars. Yes, you're going to see it very, very soon. There's only going to be a few men left when this is over. And they're getting ready for it now. All the nations are getting prepared for nuclear war. They're not getting prepared for peace. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil, which is sin. <laughs> destroy sin. Get it out of their lives. Look at verse 10. In this, the children of Yahweh which your Bible translated Lord. Well, if you look at the Unger's Bible Dictionary, you'll find out who you're praying to when you pray to Lord. It's the rabbis, dead rabbis. Before they were rabbis, they prayed to the dead pharaohs of Egypt, where they came, where Yahweh brought them out of, and they kept going back to that religion. They prayed to the dead pharaohs, they still do. And now they pray to the dead popes. Before that, they prayed to the dead rabbis. Well, the popes and the rabbis are the same thing. They're the teacher. They changed their name. They changed their name from Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians to universal. That's what the word Catholic means. They worship all gods. In this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh, nor does he love his neighbor. You don't see any love today. For this is the message that was heard from the beginning. Let's turn over to the beginning quickly. I'm just about out of time, but I've got just a few more minutes here. But Genesis, write this down, please. In Genesis... Genesis 1, verse 26, you see the purpose for mankind. 
I will make a man in my image according to my likeness. They will have rulership. He's going to give them rulership. But go over now to chapter 2, and you'll see the trees that Yahweh put before mankind. Trees are religions. Here's two religions that was put before mankind. The, tr the tree of righteousness, if you'll hold your place right there and look at Matthew, Matthew the seventh chapter, Matthew 7, and the Savior is speaking here, and he says in verse 13, Enter in through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Now he's telling you there's a very narrow gate as you have to go through here to get to Yahweh and salvation. Revelations 22, 12 through 14, the Savior, the same one has said these words. The Savior says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who keep his commandments, his Yahweh's commandments. Ten commandments, Ex Exodus 20, Exodus 20. Well, in Matthew 7, he said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of the, from thorns or figs from thistles? Likewise, every righteous tree, every righteous tree brings forth righteous fruit. That is the laws of Yahweh, righteous fruit. As 1 John 3 tells you, he who practices righteousness is righteous. He who sins practices sin is of the devil. Sin is the breaking of Yahweh's laws or commandments, Exodus 20. Beware of these false prophets, 17. Likewise, every righteous tree brings forth righteous fruit, but a tree of evil brings forth fruit of iniquity. Iniquity? Iniquity means doing away with the law. All of these religions out here today are doing away with Yahweh's law. Yes, <laughs> they're not keeping Yahweh's law. No, the Catholic Church does not keep Yahweh's law. In fact, Pope Francis fights against Yahweh's law. He says, uh, do you want salvation by keeping those old laws? Wouldn't you rather keep it God's way? Well, he's not speaking in Yahweh's way. He's speaking, if you'll look here in Genesis, the beginning, Genesis 3, this is Satan doing, talking to Adam and Eve, and verse 5 says, from Satan, read verse 4 also, read the whole thing after I shut down, and the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for he, that is Yahweh, knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be as God's. Do you get that? And you will be as gods, knowing righteousness and evil. The gods are evil. Yes, that's what they're bringing forth, sin. You belong to Satan the devil when you practice sin. You belong to Yahweh when you practice keeping the commandments of Yahweh. In, in Romans 6, Romans 6 and verse 16 the apostle Shaul, or Paul, says, Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin, which leads to death? Yes, death. Satan lied when she says, You won't die, you will die. And the Savior said, Yes, fear Yahweh, who can destroy both body and soul in hell fire. And you will, this is a second death, and you will never be resurrected again. Whether of sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Righteousness. Blessed are those who keep Yahweh's laws of righteousness, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. That's Revelations. The last chapter in Revelation, verse 12, says... And behold, I come quickly. That's the Savior doing the speaking here. If you have a red letter edition, it'd be in red. And my 
reward is with me to give every man as according to his work will be. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who keep his commandments. Blessed are those who keep his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. The tree of life. It's given here in Genesis 2. The tree of life. That's it. But notice also the tree of the gods. The evil of the gods. Be like the evil. Know the evil of the gods. Be like the gods. Satan says to eat. It's really desirable, she said. Well, of course, you see how desirable it is today. We got nuclear bombs right now that are 100 times more destructive than the bomb that we dropped on Hiroshima and 100 times more destructive than the bomb we dropped on Nagasaki. Wiped out a whole city with one bomb. Uh, over a hundred times stronger, more destructive. What could that do on a town like New York? Devastating. What does it do when you commit fornication, adultery, bestiality, sodomy? The doctors will tell you. You'll develop syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, AIDS, all of these wonderful diseases that look so desirable. No, they don't look desirable, but the lust looks desirable. Get your head on straight. Start reading your Bible and, and start coming out of this, as Yahweh said. Don't let men, don't let any man deceive you. Until next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding.